Hi, this is Kate from Minute Earth. In 1960, scientists blew up hundreds of pounds of explosives off the coast of Australia. Nearly four hours later, sounds from the blast reach underwater microphones near Bermuda, over 19,000 kilometers away. In the air, these sounds would have traveled a few dozen kilometers at most. And sure, sound generally travels a bit farther underwater because sound waves don't lose as much energy moving through water as they do through air, but not hundreds of times farther. These sounds traveled halfway around the world thanks to an underwater sound superhighway. That superhighway exists because sound travels at different speeds in different layers of the ocean. The temperature of water, and to a lesser extent its pressure, affect how densely packed its molecules are and how rigidly they're connected to each other the two factors which determine the speed of sound. At the surface, where the water is generally warm, sound moves pretty quickly. But with increasing depth, the temperature plummets, drastically slowing the speed of sound. Around 1,000 meters or so down, depending on where on the planet you are, the ocean's temperature bottoms out and the effect of pressure takes over, causing the speed of sound to increase again. But here's where it gets weird, because that layer of the ocean where the speed of sound is slowest is where sounds can travel the farthest. If you've ever skied, you may get why. Say you're speeding along on a pack trail. Then you start drifting into a much slower stretch of powder. The ski in the powder slows down, turning you and pulling you farther into the fluffy stuff toward the slower direction of travel. And if you reach the other side of the powder and hit another pack trail, your outside ski speeds up, turning you back into the pokey powder. Sound waves are a lot like skiers. If they enter a layer of water where sound travels particularly slowly, at just the right angle, or if they start out there in the first place, they can get stuck in that slow layer, bending up and down and up and down. So rather than spreading out and scattering off the surface or getting absorbed by the ocean floor, sounds in this layer get funneled along and can go and go and go. This layer, appropriately called the so far channel, may be a weird quirk of physics, but it's also really useful. Based on whales' behavior and calls, scientists think some whales use the SOFAR channel as a really long-distance telephone. And actually, so do we. Monitoring systems in the SOFAR channel can detect sounds all over the ocean, from the breaking up of ice shelves to supposedly secret nuclear tests. What's more, using this infrastructure, we can calculate how fast sounds move through this layer of water. Changes in the speed of sound in the SOFAR channel can help us track changes in the temperature of the ocean, a critical measure of our planet's health. And that is so far out. The Comprehensive Nuclear Test Ban Treaty Organization, or CTBTO, uses a network of 11 hydrophone triplets anchored from the seabed into the SOFAR channel to listen in on our oceans. It's part of their effort to collect and study sounds across the planet to figure out which sounds are nuclear tests and which are, for instance, simply the long-distance calls of lonely whales. This work has been mandated by more than 180 member states, and the data that's collected worldwide is available to researchers who want to further expand our knowledge about our planet. If you're interested, please contact ctbto.org. Thanks to CTBTO for sponsoring this video and for helping keep the world safe from nuclear weapons.